all television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. As you can see in the first epistle of John, chapter 3, verse 12, Cain was of that wicked one and slew his brother, afterward becoming the father of the Kenites, which means the sons of Cain, as you can see in Genesis chapter 4, verses 17 through 24, a separate genealogy from Adam's because Cain was the son of the serpent who was and is Satan himself and not the son of Adam, and the Kenites are the natural branches of Satan's family tree. Their four hidden dynasties even being symbolized by the last four members of Cain's genealogy, Jabal, Jubal, Tubal-Cain, and Naama, and we know the Kenites survived the flood of Noah from Genesis chapter 15 in the 19th verse, with the Hivites being, in my opinion, a cross between the Kenites and the Canaanites, and as much as it's the Hivites we see cursed to be hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and the altar of the Lord in Joshua chapter 9, becoming the Nethanim you can read of in Ezra and Nehemiah, which is how they took over the priesthood, becoming the Pharisees, Christ says the blood of righteous Abel will fall upon in Matthew chapter 23, verse 35, with the scribes being the Kenites also, in large part, as you can see in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, the generation of vipers who carry out the negative part of God's plan via education, economics, politics, and religion, the four hidden dynasties, and this is what it is to enumerate the stones worn smooth that come from the false rock who will appear in Jerusalem at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial the false capstone of the false pyramid, which is Satan's family tree, which again, the Kenites are the natural branches of. There are four hidden dynasties, four being the number of Earth, having been globalized from 1830 to 1948, when this final generation began, which is the generation of the fig tree. In 1948, when Kenite-occupied Israel came into being, and remember it was fig leaves Adam and Eve covered themselves with after committing the sin in the garden that caused Eve to be impregnated by Satan with Cain, the serpent seed who was used to bring about Christ's crucifixion, bringing to pass the prophecy of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. So going back to 1830 when the hidden dynasty of education was globalized with not only the advent of the modern state-run schooling systems right around that time, but also the technology began to be developed making it possible to brainwash large groups of people at one time with the electronic media, the so-called founding fathers of electromagnetism, Joseph Henry and Michael Faraday, met together in 1830, which is also when Joseph Henry used electric current to cause a bell to ring from a thousand feet, later extending it to a mile, basically paving the way for the telegraph, and from the telegraph came eventually the television, whereby most of the brainwashing of the 20th century stemmed from up until the 21st century when the internet came into being, which is how the masses are still brainwashed via all all four hidden dynasties, 1830 also being when the rapture theory came into being that deceives people into expecting Christ to return at any moment, when in all reality, Christ won't return at all until after Satan appears as the Antichrist at 666. In 1913, economics was the next of the four hidden dynasties to be globalized with the creation of the Federal Reserve System, solidified by Bretton Woods at the end of World War II, which is when the United Nations came into being in 1945, the Great Horn of the He-Goat, which is symbolic of the shadow government of the Kenites. Not the notable horn of Daniel chapter 8 verse 5, which is symbolic of Germany as it was used by the Kenites in the world wars, which is what the last verse of Isaiah chapter 9 has reference to as far as the 20th century is concerned, Germany being Judah, but once World War II ended, the notable horn was replaced with the United Nations, the Great Horn of the Hego, which again is symbolic of the shadow government of the Sons of Cain, which is split into two warring factions called the unipolar globalists as opposed to the multipolar globalists, which is what nation shall rise against nation means in Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21. The goat fig nation, not in any specific geographic location, but again the shadow government of the Kenites rising up against itself, which is what causes the breaking of the great horn of the Hego 
goat, which is the United Nations, after which the he goat of Daniel 8 becomes the leopard of Daniel chapter 7. The Egyptians against the Egyptians, as you can see in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2, being the same thing as nation shall rise against nation. Again, the Kenites use the pyramid symbolism in Egypt as symbolic of bondage. After the great horn of the he goat gets broken, so to speak, the one world political system you can read of in Revelation chapter 13 comes into being, which as you can see in Ezekiel chapters 29 through 32 is symbolized by Egypt also. The breaking of the great horn of the he-goat being the same thing as the destruction of the one who sends a razor of taxes in Daniel chapter 11 verse 20, as you can see in the Daniel 11 hypothesis on biblicalresearchlabs.com. Kingdom against kingdom being the deadly wound that happens just before Satan appears as the false Christ, as you can also see in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, first nation shall rise against nation, breaking the great horn of the he-goat, and then king Kingdom against kingdom is the deadly wound, and then city against city, as you can see in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2, happens at 666, when most Christians who will have become Egyptians, so to speak, as the lion of Daniel chapter 7, two and a half months beforehand, get destroyed from being citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem when they worship Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means, becoming grafted into Satan's family tree at that time, along with the Kenites, who are the natural branches of thereof. And as you can see in Revelation chapter 11 verse 8, Jerusalem is at that time during 666 spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, which was caused by the Kenites who carry out the negative part of God's plan. The evil figs, as they're called in Jeremiah chapter 24, along with all who are part of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when the seventh angel sounds, which happens three and a half days after Satan kills the two witnesses who are most likely most Moses and Elijah. That's when the true Christ returns and all are changed into spiritual bodies. And the Kenites who failed to repent before the return of the true Christ will have their dominion taken away at that time along with those still part of the lion and the bear. Daniel's fourth beast having been destroyed which is made up of Satan's fallen angel locust army as well as his role of Antichrist with Satan himself being cast into the bottomless pit until the thousand years are finished when he gets cast into the lake of fire along with whoever chooses to follow him again at that time. Everyone else goes into the third earth and heaven age as citizens of the new, which means the eternal Jerusalem, the holy city that will come down from God out of heaven at that time when all who are part of God's family tree through Christ Jesus go into the eternity.